Welcome to Wawa Mela Channel. This'll do. Santa Claus had a broken sleigh, and he was stuck in an outback town in the far north of Australia. He had hit a tree stump and the carriage went flying. Then the reindeers took fright, and flew off back home without him. Now he was stuck beneath a gum tree. Luckily it wasn't Christmas yet, it was only November, he'd only been looking to see what route he would take on Christmas Eve. A koala in a tree looked down at him. Santa, you must be hot in all those clothes, he said. In the North Pole, it is cold at Christmas time. But in Australia, it is summer. Santa looked down at his clothes. His furry boots were black and heating up in the sun. The fur trim on his coat was damp with sweat. He did feel very hot and bothered. A kookaburra laughed at him. We really need to find you some board shorts and a t-shirt. He cackled. And a sleigh, Santa said ruefully, looking at the broken pieces. And something to drag it with. I don't want the children in Australia to miss out on their presents. A clever dingo was going past at that very moment. You need something that will manage the dirt roads, all their bumps and holes, he said. And don't you want to do it all in one night? You'll need to go fast. I think the best thing for you is a car. A car, said Santa. He'd never thought of using a car before. With air conditioning, said the koala. He knew what it was like to have hot fur in summer. Presently a magpie popped by, who had heard about Santa's predicament. He had borrowed some clothes from a surfer, he had just nipped them off the clothesline. There was a red pair of board shorts, a white t-shirt, and some flip-flop thongs. Santa wasn't quite happy with something so boring though, so he winked his eye, touched his nose, and did a very special kind of Christmas magic. Now the t-shirt had Christmas bells on it, and holly on the shoulders. A pair of sunglasses and a big Santa hat also materialized. That's better, he said. And he put them on and felt much cooler. Next the dingo came back. Only instead of running, he was behind the wheel of a car. It was an old kind of car, with faded rubber wheels. Some patches were red, and some were yellow. But it worked, and that was the most important thing. Dot Santa clapped his hands. Oh ho ho, he said. That looks amazing. This'll do, said the dingo. Sorry? Said Santa. I said, this'll do, won't it? Oh, it will do very nicely. I think we'll call it this'll do, said Santa. But Koala was frowning. What's wrong? Said the dingo. It's not very Christmassy, he said. What about some decorations? Like a tree. Magpie knew where there was a broken tree, and they went and put its branches on the top of the car. Santa touched his nose again, and the tree turned into a real Christmas tree, with sparkly baubles. The kookaburra put some more branches around the spare wheel, and Santa did his magic again and turned it into tinsel. It's perfect, said Santa. This'll do, you and I are about to have the adventure of a lifetime. Let's map out the route so we know which way to go on Christmas Eve. Don't you want some company? Said the animals. They didn't think one lonely Santa Claus could find his way through the wide, hot desert by himself. It's okay, said Santa. And it was okay. He drove around the outback with his little notebook, and planned exactly where he would go on Christmas Eve. It all seemed easy enough. At the end, he parked Isildu in the car park in Darwin, and patted him on the bonnet. I'll be back on Christmas Eve. See you then, Isildu. Santa returned on Christmas Eve morning. He had decided to deliver the presents to Australia in the daytime, because in the nighttime it was so hot that nobody could sleep. But in the daytime everyone was swimming in the waterholes, 
and he thought no one would see him. But when Santa got back to Dusseldu, he discovered that the rains had come. The roads were very wet and the rivers had risen. It's okay, Dusseldu, he said. Santa was an optimistic sort. I'm Santa, after all. Let's get these presents delivered. But only a short time into the deliveries, Dusseldu hit a patch of bull dust, and beneath it, a pointy rock was hiding. It burst one of Dusseldu's tires. Dusseldu couldn't drive with only three wheels. And Santa had never changed a tire before in his life. Oh no, Dusseldu, cried Santa. What will we do? Now Santa is, of course, quite magic, and an anxious Santa is something that the natural world finds quite impossible to ignore. So of course Santa's friends, Dingo, Koala, Magpie and Kookaburra, all heard his distress call. In fact, they had been waiting for him to call on them, because the Australian desert is big, hot and wide, and getting stuck there can be dangerous. The Australian outback was one of those places you really, really need good friends for. Santa's friends were there in a flash, they had been having some nice baths in Mataranka while they waited for him. Koala knew how to change a tire, with his handy paws and claws. In just a few minutes, he changed the tire, and Dusseldu was ready to rock and roll. They dropped off presents at Catherine and Kalkarinji dot in Nahulanbai and Ganmarianga. In Jabiru and Humpty Doo. Then Dusseldu got too hot, and its light started flashing. No worries, said Magpie. And he found a bucket, and topped up the radiator. I'm glad you knew what to do, said Santa, fanning his beard. It helps to have friends. All was well until they got to Boralula. The tree started to waggle on the corrugated roads, and one by one, the shiny Christmas balls started flying off. Kookaburra, with his sharp eyes, saw them fall by the road as they hurtled past. He flew behind Dusseldu and picked each of them up in his beak. But then they met a creek. And the creek was so swollen with water that when they tried to cross it, Dusseldu got stuck there, the waves lapping up to her windows. Slowly, slowly, a cunning old croc saw them struggling to push her out. He glided up, up, to the unfortunate friends. Between dreams and opportunities there's a bridge. But even crocodiles like Christmas, and want Santa to deliver his presents, especially to their hungry little babies, who particularly love spiced biscuits. I'll help you, he grinned. He was actually quite nice, for all his scary appearance. He pushed the car across the river with his nose, and soon Dusseldu was high and dry once more. Thank you, Croc, exclaimed Santa. It really had been the adventure. So that was how Santa, with a car called Dusseldu, as well as the help of a whole lot of animal friends, made his way through the far north of Australia, delivering presents on Christmas Eve. Dingo, Koala, Magpie, Kookaburra and even Croc had had so much fun that Santa asked if they would be his helpers every year. Now, every year, they take Dusseldu around Australia delivering presents. Then after that is done, they take a plane to the North Pole, where they sit beside him on his regular sleigh as he delivers the presents to the children in all the other parts of the world. Because doing a job is so much easier if have friends to do it alongside with. But what this means is, even if you don't live in Australia, you might just happen to see a koala, a dingo, a kookaburra, a magpie or a crocodile on Christmas Eve. If you do, you know why.